Hi, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out. In a previous video, I fully disassembled this Alexion 17 Dual Movement. It's the first time I'd ever tried to do so in my life. I did manage to get it back together, but the thing that absolutely drove me crazy was trying to get the train wheel bridge back onto the train wheel pivots. It took me ages and yeah, it was so frustrating. So I thought, yeah, this is a classic example of that, you know, when other people do it, it just looks like they dump it on top and give it a couple of pushes with the tweezers and on it leaps. And I thought, surely that can't be how it happens. Well, there's bad news and there's good news. It is possible to get it on doing it that way, but it takes a lot of practice and a lot of technique. So I've been practicing over the first few weeks. I've still got a fair way to go. But I just thought I'd share some of the tips on what I've tried in ways of getting the train wheel bridge on without going crazy. Because when I did some YouTube searches, when you YouTube search for train wheel bridge, you get lots of videos about trains, which is really not exactly what I was looking for. So what are some of the things that I think that can help in getting this thing reassembled without going absolutely crazy? Well, as I said, a lot of it is practice and technique. So the first thing I would recommend doing is practicing just handling the bridge itself with tweezers. So the first thing that I needed to sort of work out is how is one meant to pick this up? Because when I see it in other people's videos, it looks like they're holding it from the top and placing it down like so. And yeah, that does seem to be the way to do it. Um, if you try to hold it like this and put it down on this way, that doesn't seem to work as well. Uh, it is possible to do it that way, but um, the bottom of your tweezers is more likely to fail on things and it's it looks like it's easier, but I don't think it actually is. So then the question is, is how do you actually hold the bridge from the top? So that way, I think, results in you having to camber your wrist over this way too much. So it kind of gets in the way a little bit. So what you can do is actually hold it a little bit like, hold it like this. So now if I come around this side, you can see that the outside um, jaw of the tweezers is sort of like down a little bit see how that's like down at an angle and that means that I can hold it this way and my hand my thumbs not getting in the way I can actually see much better so the first thing that I would recommend doing is just practicing just picking the train wheel bridge up and just pick it up and put it down pick it up put it down again and again until you are sure that you have got that right. Once you're confident that you're able to pick up the train wheel bridge reliably and repeatedly, the next skill that you need to develop is picking it up, which you should have by now, but then putting it down on top of the train wheel pivots. Don't worry about trying to get it through the holes of the jewels. That's a separate skill. A separate skill. The reason this is so frustrating is trying to do everything all at once, trying to learn everything all at once, and that's just about impossible. So what I would do is just build on that skill that you've already developed, picking it up and now just put it down. And so did you see the way that it sort of like jumped um, to the side as I put it down? That's what you're kind of trying to avoid happening it's it's kind of like a, a development of technique so that's okay so we just pick it up again and we just put it down that way was a lot that time was a lot more controlled um, can certainly hold the movement holder with your hand so then the movement holder won't slide around And so just keep on practicing, picking it up and putting it down on top of the train wheel pivots. And 
as I said, don't worry about trying to get it in, get the pivots in the holes. All we're trying to do at this point is develop this technique for consistently being able to pick it up and put it down. Now, I'm doing this under magnification. I've got my new mag, uh, microscope, which turned up. Um, so that's absolutely a big help. If you cannot see, you can't do this by feel. You really do need to be able to see. And I think once I get better at this, I probably will not need to do it under the microscope, but right now I am. Okay, so just practice picking it up and putting it. See, that one was, that was terrible. See the way it jumped around that time. That's definitely not what you want. That one wasn't too good either. Yeah, it's all gone, all gone bad, so that's not good. That was the way. I saw a lot of it is the, in the technique, is just in how you actually remove the tweezers as well. So I think it's it's rather than a drop, yeah, it's more of a withdraw. You don't want to you know, just drop it. You've actually got to place it and then withdraw the tweezers like so. Okay. So just keep on practicing that until you've kind of like got that down pat. Okay. Then, obviously the whole point of this is getting to a point where it is possible to place the bridge on the pivots and the pivots go into the jewel holes because that's what this all is all about. So obviously for that to happen, the jewel holes need to line up. There is a certain amount of play in these wheels that they can move around. So you want them to be as close as possible to where they are able to sit. And I found that looking straight down, top down with the microscope is much easier to tell that than sort of like looking um, side on, looking at, you know, 45 degrees with a loop or something. Um, you want to be able to look top down. And this is all dependent on light. You need really good light. And obviously the microscope takes care of that. And yeah, having the pivots basically pointing straight up so that they are not flopping over to one side. Now the worst offender is usually the escape wheel. It will want to flop around. So you need to make sure that it is, is in the right place. And sometimes you can tell that just by looking at the relative distances of the, the edge of the wheels with respect to the um, the recess in the main plate for the wheel. Um, if it's obviously closer on one side than another, then it's probably not right. So those are looking pretty good to me. So now what you want to do is use those skills that you've already built up. Again, I think you'll get really frustrated if you try to do this without having those skills um, developed and built up. Um, so that now that you can consistently pick up the train wheel bridge, that you can consistently put it down. And now what you're trying to do is put it down on the pivots. And looking straight through the microscope, I can see the pivots um, through the jewel holes. But can I actually, so I put it down but yeah, it didn't actually go really anywhere near. But if I just give it a push, what happens? This is where I need to use gentle, gentle pushing. Oh, it's so close. I can see the fourth wheel. Oh, are we gonna get it? I can see the fourth wheel pivot but it's not actually through the pivot hole.
now it is. Hey, we got it. That's not bad. We got it. <laughs> I'm actually pretty pleased with that because um, when I put it down, it actually was nowhere near the um, it was nowhere near the pivots. It was like a couple of millimeters off, and I was able to just carefully push it over. And um, until I could see that definitely the third and the fourth wheel, they're the critical ones. I'm not so stressed about the escape wheel. That one is usually more problematic and that one can be manipulated. I mean, they can all be manipulated in if you want to. It's just a bit of a pain. But yeah, I've noticed a little bit, whether it's just with this movement or, or what, I don't know. This is the only one I've tried on. Sometimes... It will be sitting over the pivot, but the pivot just doesn't quite, quite want to go into the hole, so it just needs a bit of a push, or sometimes just trying to turn the wheels a little bit, and it will just jump into the hole. So that one looked like it wasn't going to be successful, but it was successful. But one success a master does not make. So now what you need to do, which is what I will continue to need to to keep doing because you know I haven't done this enough is just keep doing this just keep doing this and you will find that it will get easier and easier and easier and you know as I say I haven't been doing this a huge amount myself um, but I've actually moved in the space of you know, a week from thinking this is absolutely impossible. I must have fancy, it must be camera trickery because no one's jump on like that to actually thinking that it actually is possible um, just with practice and technique. So well, let's have another go now. So I've got my, my plastic stick Sometimes, or often, you'll need to just apply a little bit of gentle force down onto the bridge. And yeah, I can actually see all three pivots through the holes. Now, they're not through the jewels yet. It's a gentle push. Oh, see, did you see that with the gentle push, it just kind of wanted to um, jump away. So the one that's at most, oh, oh dear me. Yeah, so this is a problem, is, is it? Nah. The okay, that's the that's the fourth wheel. That's the third wheel, but. just jumped in that was the fourth wheel did you see that the fourth wheel just jumped in but the um, escape wheel is kind of like flopping around so what I could do in this situation I've got my super fine tweezers and I can actually come in here and I can actually grab the escape will pivot, or well, I think it just jumped in. There we go. It just jumped in. But yeah, with these, um, I think these are number four tweezers. Yeah, with these number four tweezers, I can actually get in here like this, and I can actually grab the pivot and I can physically move it to where it needs to be. So look, that wasn't actually too bad, even though 
it kind of started out a little bit catastrophically. And so this is just really demonstrating to me the just how critical technique uh, and practice is in terms of having the necessary skills to be able to do this. Um, but also, I, I can't stress enough the difference that being able to see has actually made. And I'm doing all of this work under the microscope. My microscope camera has not turned up yet, um, which is why, unfortunately, I can't show you guys what I'm seeing down the microscope. But I've also got my brand new Sony ZV-E10, um, which is what you guys are looking through. So hopefully that's working pretty well for you. Uh, and it also means that I can have the camera out of my way which is the other problem I had in that previous video, just filming with my iPhone. It was basically right on top of the work. Uh, and you just can't have that. So, yeah, this, the camera is well and truly out of the way. I can see exactly what I'm doing. I've got really good light. You want all of those things. So let's have another go. Where's my stick gone? There we go. One little trick, um, you see that this has got this sort of big long foot down here. And the problem with looking through magnification is, is that you lose depth perception. So it's hard to tell sometimes whether you are where you are with respect to it. But I found that by dropping it down or cambering it down towards that foot, that gives me um, feeling as to where I am, if that makes any sense. Whether that's a help or a hindrance, I really don't know. Because um, the other thing is, is that it, it has a tendency to kind of like, there's two locating lugs built into the bridge to align it with the plate. And if, if it drops into those first, then it actually becomes just about impossible to get it on the pivots because it gets caught up on, the holes. So anyway, I did drop it down. Um, of course, my best attempt is always off camera, but that's okay. Um, the third wheel is in. Let's just see if we can manipulate a little bit. Uh, there we go. Did you see that? See how it just dropped down? I mean, I could have manipulated it like I did for the last one, but it was getting messy, so... Just try again. I think it's important, too, to know sort of when to cut your losses. This one's going to be exactly the same thing again, that it's dropped into the fourth wheel pivot, but I've got no idea where the third wheel is. Pivot is, it's nowhere near, so that one hasn't worked either. Look, I, th I think a lot of it is just, again, it's just practice and technique, so I need to do a fair bit more practice, but I've seen enough successes now to, to actually know that it is possible and you know even if i do need to manipulate the pivots to get them in you know the worst case scenario is i can still get this in in a in a few minutes whereas the first time i tried this uh 
uh, it was it took me maybe 15 minutes so I just want my stick just to give a little downwards pressure there we go there we go it actually oh no it's not there sorry I thought I had it but no the escape wheels popped out um, yeah I can see that the escape wheel is really flopped over it's nowhere near Oops. That's it. Yeah, so that wasn't actually too hard at all. I had to manipulate the escape wheel and the fourth wheel was a little bit tricky, but you know, it, it took less than a minute to get those in. So I'm sure that with some more practice, I will be able to do what you see on some of those um, other videos where they basically drop it, give it a couple of pushes and on it goes. Um, I'm now convinced that that is possible. But yeah, hopefully this has been helpful in showing some of the techniques that I've used anyway. If you've got some suggestions on techniques, I'm sure there's guys much more experienced than me who are watching this video. Thanks so much for coming along and supporting me in my journey. Uh, it's kind of fun when it's, uh, until it's not, you know what I mean. So yeah, I hope some of these techniques have been helpful in others who might be struggling with getting the train wheel bridges on. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much. Give me a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now and watch out.